Welcome to A Cry in the Wilderness Ministries with Pastor Larry D. Russell, a ministry of Fundamental Missionary Baptist Church of La Folla, Tennessee. Service times will be given at the close of today's telecast.
He loves me like I was his only child Never felt so loved before I could never ask for more He loves me like I was his only child God really loves me Yes, He really loves me He loves me like I was his only child Never favors me above the rest. And I can't help but feel that I am blessed. He treats me best, I often say. But all my father's children feel that way. He loves me like I was his only child. Never felt so before I could never ask for more he loves me like I was his only child God really loves me yes he really loves me he loves me like I was his only child yes he really loves me he really loves me he loves me like I was his only child. Ten. Then we're going to be over in the book of Romans, chapter number six there also somewhat. And I pray and trust today that we can be a blessing, be a help to you. And it's certainly good to be able to come into this place of worship. I don't take it lightly that I'm here today. I guess I got, if I got what I really deserved, I wouldn't even be here today. But I'm glad that I received mercy. And through getting mercy, one day I experienced grace. And the only way that you can ever experience the grace of God is realize that God's had mercy on you to bring you to His saving grace. Amen? Exactly right. That if you got what was just, then you wouldn't have ever been saved. But God is a God that forgives sin. In the book of St. John, chapter number 10, let's stand for a moment for the reading of God's Word. Be a very few moments there. Out of your busy day today, out of John chapter 10 and verse number 7, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. <coughs> I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Let us pray. Our precious, divine, heavenly Father, we come to you today before the throne of grace in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would ask you, Lord, today if you look down, I ask you, Lord, to find favor in this vessel today, God, that you would fill it, God, with your Holy Spirit. I ask you, Lord, today if there be anything, God, that would keep this vessel from being filled as it should be filled, that you would forgive us of it, Lord. I ask you, Lord, now to take the preeminence. I want you to be number one in my life and in this service and in my life today and in the life of someone that's here today. I ask you, Lord, that they would receive you. And I, I believe, God, that you'll, uh, Lord, if they'll just invite you into their heart and life, their life will change forever. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning, amen. I want to take the latter part there out of that verse, but let me say something out of verse number 10. He said, Jesus said, these are the words of Jesus here speaking. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, amen. And I, I, you know, I, I get to studying about life, amen, and there's a lot of disappointments in life, amen, but I want to tell you something right now, if you're saved, you've got everything to rejoice about. Your name's written in heaven, amen. You've got everything to rejoice about. In a day when you hear nothing but bad news, that's all you hear, amen. You hear nothing good, you hear nothing positive today. Everything is negativeness, amen, that you hear about today uh, over the news, amen. I know this week that I never heard any news uh, from the time that I went to camp meeting and uh, till after the camp meeting was over, amen. Uh, I don't think we had the television on at all, amen. And uh, I, I believe that's the best way to do, amen. If you're going to get along with God, you're going to have to shut the world out, amen. And it just be you and God, amen. So some of you probably know some things that's going on in our world around us right now that I'm not even aware of, amen. And I feel like that whatever it is you found out, that I really hadn't missed out on anything anyway, man. But the Bible said here, he said, I say unto you, verily, verily, and uh, when he uses that term there, he's saying truly, amen. He's telling you a truth right there. He said, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, amen. Well, I'm glad one day I got an invitation to come to that door and go through that door, amen. I want to tell you right now, he said that everything that and everybody had ever come before me, he said they're nothing but thieves and he said they're robbers, amen. And if I could say anything to you today, uh, that's exactly what the adversary wants today, uh, the opponent of your soul today. Uh, uh, that's all he wants to do. He wants to steal your your soul, amen, and take you to the pits of an everlasting burning hell. Many one and said, I am the door by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, amen. Now I want to tell you right now, uh, I, I, the Baptist church is not the door. Uh, the Pentecostal, the church of God by denomination and, and uh, this church and that church that you see visibly around you is not a door for your entrance of salvation, amen. But it takes the saving grace of God to bring you to that door of salvation. I'm reminded that the Lord told the church of Laodicea before he closed out that dispensation right there and he said, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if any man hear my voice. Now he's talking about the door of your heart, amen. Talking about the door of your heart, amen. And he said, I stand at the door and knock. But if any man hear my voice and open the door, he said, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. I want you to know something right now. Your entrance into God's celestial city is through the Son of God. Amen. There's none other today. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. I want to tell you right now today, I'm reminded, and this is simple, but it's true. Thank God, and, and that's what we're missing out. We sinners, sinners, are not realizing uh, what you and I realize. 
We think, well, it's simple. Everybody ought to be able to understand it. Well, if everybody ought to be able to understand it, why didn't we understand it sooner than what we did? Amen. Could I say this today? I want to tell you right now to a sinner person to get into God's uh, into God's eternal life. I want to tell you it looks like the hardest thing that you could ever do. Amen. But I want to tell you right now, it wasn't you that come to Christ. It was Christ that come to you. Amen. And by Him coming to you, you just become the recipient. Amen. Of His salvation. Amen. And then once He comes to you, then you turn to Him. Am I right? That's right. Amen. But He's come to you and it's left up to you to turn to Him. Amen. It's left up for you to receive Him into your life. Amen. Now let me say this today. The Lord wants you to be saved. John 1 and verse 11. He came unto His own and His own received Him not. Now listen to this. But as many as received it. Now I want you to notice something. He came. He came unto his own. I heard uh, one of our preaching brethren preaching this morning and brought that verse in if I'm not mistaken. And he said he came unto his own world. And then he come unto his own people. What about that? And listen here. And he said, but he came unto his own, and what did they do? They rejected him and received him not. Now, one of the...